JBN Television News at 7, A Pulse, and All Things Grenadian. Look out for our new features through expanded synergies with our media partners in Barbados, St. Lucia, Jamaica, Trinidad, and beyond. Capturing the latest in news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Credible, informative. Thank you for making us number one. News at 7, live, Monday to Friday, on JBN Television, Channel 7 and 11. K105.5 and 105.9, Hot 98.5 and 98.7, GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel, and www.gbn.gd. GBN, with you anywhere and everywhere. Let's Cook Grenada, a practical culinary guide to local cuisine. Learn new ways to prepare your favorite foods. Or try different menus from various locations across. Live from downtown Port of Spain, this is the TV6 Weekend News. Good evening and welcome to the TV6 Weekend News. I'm Michelle Ann Awai. In the headlines, Tropical Storm Gonzalo passes with minimal damage. Five additional cases have tested positive for COVID-19. And in sport, England take control of third test against the West Indies. They say God is a trini, but he must also love Tobago too, as both islands were spared a direct hit from Tropical Storm Gonzalo earlier today. Tracking the storm as it headed for the islands is our team of Segoni Mohamed and cameraman Emmanuel Nunez. We're joining them now live from Tobago with an update. Hi Segoni, what is the atmosphere like in Tobago right now? Sigoni, can you hear me, Sigoni? Oh. Good Hi, evening, Sigoni. Trinidad and Tobago. I am Sigoni Mohammed coming to you live from Scarborough, Tobago. It's a completely different situation than when you saw me earlier this morning when I was covered in a raincoat and boots, of course, with heavy downpours occurring across the island. In terms of what's going on with Tropical Storm Gonzalo, let me give you the latest at a glance. What we're seeing now is that the Tropical Storm downgraded uh, just around 2 p.m. to a tropical depression after passing across Trinidad and Tobago, almost between the islands in terms of where that bulk of moisture was. And then it is it later downgraded further into a post-tropical cyclone. So pretty much the seven named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season barreling across our area has now dissipated and we'll no longer be seeing advisories being issued by the National Hurricane Center on Gonzalo and the Trinidad Tobago Met Service has also discontinued all of its tropical storm warnings for the islands as well as adverse weather alerts earlier today. What we are seeing though is that our seas do have some bit of normalcy to return to and it is pretty much back to fair weather at this time and gentler winds. This after the islands were bracing for wicked wind action earlier today. Torrential downpours and intense thunderstorms that could have caused life-threatening flash flooding in areas. And what we understand from being here in Tobago within the last 14-hour period is that there were minor 
incidents and issues dealt with by Tima, that being a fallen tree at a health center. A bus shed was blown off in Argyle. There was a minor power outage in Canaan, but that was attended to immediately by TN Tech and CERT teams responded as well. There were no properties affected by flooding in and around the area. I understand the same goes for Trinidad as well, but we do have more on that in another report coming to you shortly. And at this time, we are basically back to regular, typical Saturday evening across the islands, business as usual. There are cars along the stretch here in Scarborough, and people are just getting ready to go out and have a good time. What we understand with the T Trinidad and Tobago Inter-Island Ferry Service as our seas return to some level of normalcy is that sailings will be resuming on Sunday, that's tomorrow the 26th, and persons originally scheduled to sail since Friday and today day after cancellations were made well they will be accommodated based on availability of space so they are advised to get down to those terminal branches and find out what's happening there basically it was what people consider the biggest emergency dress rehearsal for Trinidad and Tobago in a very active and ongoing Atlantic hurricane season just to let you in on information we are anticipating the passage of a tropical wave within the next 24 to 48 hour period across the islands and just behind that we are also tracking another potential tropical cyclone that could make its way very well into our area yet again by the end of the week that's coming up into next weekend. So join us here on Team 6 to find out what's going to happen with that. For now, it is pretty much just a beautiful evening across Tobago and in Trinidad. Still quite cloudy in a few areas, but it's clearing up as we speak and we're going back to some level of normalcy. So that's it from me, coming to you live from Scarborough, Tobago, in front of, of course, the beautiful, I love Tobago. I can't wait to come home and see you guys. Until then, I'll see you guys soon. Michelle, it's back to you in studio. Thanks so much, Sagoni. You guys keep safe. Well, Tima says they only had to respond to two of the ten reports they received as Tobago was spared the wrath of Tropical Storm Gonzalo. And THA Chief Secretary Ansel Dennis says he is pleased with the precautionary measures taken by Tobago Emergency Services. Elizabeth Williams spoke with the Chief Secretary and has this report. Well, I'm satisfied thus far. I think we are well prepared. We have established a number of shelters across the island shelters will furnish with adequate supplies to respond to any need that may arise. THA Chief Secretary Ansel Dennis said the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, TN Tech, was better equipped this time around to treat with any eventuality in Tobago. TV6 observed sandbags placed to the gate of the commission in Scarborough, and the majority of trucks had been removed from the compound. State agencies such as TN Tech have a number of assets deployed across the island as well, so they are prepared to respond I would say better than the last time to, to any power outages or any issues that may arise with electricity. Reports of minor damage in Tobago, a fallen tree on the Likito Community Center, and a roof blown off in Argyle with respect to a bus shed. Mr. Dennis said he is pleased with this country's readiness to treat with any eventuality and is thankful we were spared the worst. It has not intensified as we may have expected it to, um, but we ought to continue to be vigilant and, and as safe as possible during this period. The Chief Secretary spoke with TV6 at Tima's Command Center, Fairfield Complex, Tobago. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. In an interview with our political editor, Jewel Brown, earlier this evening, ODPM CEO, retired Major General Rodney Smart said the ODPM was hoping for the best, but was prepared for the worst. We've been fortunate to see it cross over both Tobago first and then Trinidad without any major damage being done. Just a few minor incidents. Incidents like what, sir? All right, so we've had in, um, reports of trees falling on, on homes. Diego Martin, we, we had that in, in Mayaro. In Tobago as well, we had a... a one incident where a tree fell on a, a bus route, oh sorry, on a bus shelter. We've had as well some reports of flooding in the Lavantil area, but nothing too major. So this, we were fortunate for this one. 
Preparations were underway as this country is experiencing a rise in new local COVID-19 cases as the government continues to urge the wearing of face masks, physical distancing and regular sanitizing of hands. The COVID-19 situation pose a challenge in terms of preparedness. Certainly, and a few, one of the first exercises we did in early May was to simulate what would happen if we had to evacuate a village. If we had to evacuate a village, what new preparations we had to put in place because of the COVID-19 environment that we find ourselves in. In fact, in Tobago, I was told that two shelters were open and they had put in place those same, those same training that we had done previously. He spoke of another system that the ODPM and the Met Office is monitoring that he says could be about five or six days away, as he also urged vigilance with the tropical depression that just passed us. As it stands, the weather system has gone past Trent and Tobago, but we want to still be vigilant because there still could be some moisture associated with the system. So we want to say to Trent and Tobago, continue being vigilant being prepared and as you as you probably realize behind this system is another system and we want to make sure we don't get to a space where we become so complacent and we hit and not be prepared for it a number of locals are on the radar of the TTPS for facilitating the illegal immigration of migrants. The announcement came today from the Minister of National Security amid unconfirmed reports that non-nationals are at the center of the recent local COVID cases. Renessa Cutting has more. Unbelievable ads such as these have been making the rounds on social media, offering interested parties from Venezuela, sea and land transportation to a destination in TNT by any means necessary at a cost of US $250 and up. National Security Minister Stuart Young confirmed that the National Security Forces are aware of these operations and he says it is not just non-nationals on the radar. It is Trinidad and Tobagoonians who are part of this. We have locals, Trinidadians, who are part of these organizations engaging in the importation of illegal immigrants and facilitating it. The police service is going to be investigating these instances and charging persons for it. In fact, Young says persons were caught red-handed in the act of human trafficking. We have picked up a number of Trinidadians via intercept on boats, bringing across Venezuelans who are illegal immigrants and they are going to be charged. The police shall be charging them. Right now in accordance with health protocols we have them in quarantine and they will be facing the criminal charges that they deserve. A close eye is also being kept on fishermen and other persons with operations close to the sea. An active investigation is taking place with respect to that and I've also asked that if they're local Trinidadian businessmen who are facilitating the breach of regulations by permitting persons to disembark and permitting persons to come off these vessels into Trinidad without permission and none of them have permission, that those Trinidadian businessmen are subject to be charged as well and also to have revenue location of whatever licenses. Young says immigrants legally in the country also face revocation of their status if found in these illegal activities. Meanwhile, a word of caution is also going out to persons harboring illegal immigrants on land. So we're asking you, please, when you're renting your premises, please inquire and see whether these persons have permission to be here in Trinidad and Tobago. If not, you too are putting us at risk and you too maybe breach of criminal law and subject to potential criminal charges. These warnings come on the heels of unofficial reports that non-nationals are at the center of the latest local cases. While not confirming or denying this, the National Security Minister gave his assurance that the language barrier is not deterring any investigation. And at the appropriate time, if evidence is unearthed as to where exactly those contacts may have been and whether they are 
illegal immigrants involved, then that would be told to the population. Persons with information into these activities are asked to inform the police. Anyone with any available information, please dial 555. We're dedicating that line, which is being manned by the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Telephone number 555. Please provide us with any information. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. Three children are among the most recent cases of local COVID spread. The disturbing news came from the Ministry of Health today, which also disclosed that one school is now closed and up to 200 persons could be affected. Renessa Cutting has the details. The latest five cases are all primary contacts of case 142. Three of them are children. One of the children recently attended classes at the Marval RC school, prompting immediate closure of the institution. So now that this child is positive, those persons, students, teachers, etc., in that school will be considered primary contacts. And as such, all of the primary contacts, in addition to contacts, their contacts, for instance, their parents, their siblings, will now be placed into home quarantine for a period of 14 days. These latest cases, having not abided by the health protocols, have the ability to impact hundreds of persons. We have 76 children in that school. We have at least 12 or so other persons, so we close to 90 individuals as primary contacts from that one child, and our secondary contacts will be upwards of 200 in that particular instance. Health authorities are not categorizing these latest cases as community spread, but they do have their eyes on a new development. Over the last two days, we have seen an upsurge in viral illness coming to our health centers presenting, and we have been able to sample 233 of those over the last two days. As a result of these developments, patients at health institutions across the country will only be allowed one visitor a day. To strictly enforce the one visitor per patient rule, it is not one visitor at a time. That was in place, but like everything else, we may have dropped our guard. This is one visitor more than allowed for persons in elderly homes. And as of today, we are going to go back to the measures where in these homes, we are asking that no visitors be allowed. As of Saturday morning, our number of positive cases stood at 147. But the health minister says there is no consideration to implement further lockdown measures at this time. Unfortunately for one sector though, the existing measures remain. One of the things that we were looking at this weekend was starting to reopen the entertainment industry. Um, we heard your cries and we were on the verge of doing that. But events from Wednesday to today have now put that on the back burner. The health minister is imploring persons to observe all health guidelines moving forward so as to deter the spread of the virus. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. Still ahead in the TV6 Weekend News, a former government minister calls out the UNC leader for slavery remark. That story and more after the break, so stay with us. This is the voice of the PNM. JBN Television News at 7, A Pulse, and All Things Grenadian. Look out for our new features through expanded synergies with our major partners in Barbados, St. Lucia, Jamaica, Trinidad, and beyond. Capturing the latest in news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Credible, informative. Thank you for making us number one. News at 7, live. Monday to Friday on GBN Television, Channel 7 and 11, K105.5 and 105.9, Hot 98.5 and 98.7, GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel and www.gbn.gd. GBN, with you anywhere and everywhere. Let's Cook Grenada, a practical culinary guide to local cuisine. Learn new ways to prepare your favorite foods. Or try different menus. 
from various locations across the island. Let's Cook, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on GBN Television, Channel 7 and 11, GBN's Facebook page, and GBN's YouTube channel. If you miss it, catch the repeat Thursdays at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 3.30 p.m. You've spoken. We have heard. Now we're making more time available for your evening primetime shows on K105. From Monday, July 6, your law will air from 6 to 7 p.m. On Tuesdays, Simply Agriculture. And on Wednesdays, join discussions on constitution reform in partnership with Island Media. At 5.55 p.m., we bring you news headlines, a capsule on local, regional, and international events, followed by News at 7 via simulcast with GBN Television. Join Godfrey Augustine for stimulating discussions on Release It from 8 p.m on Wednesdays and Thursdays. GBN's K105.5 and 105.9. We're with you. Comparing government's repatriation exercise to slavery and indentureship has angered former Public Utilities Minister Robert LaHunt. He calls the remarks insensitive. You're entitled to your view, you know. But that statement as a person who wants to aspire to the leadership job in this country shows a little bit of insensitivity, Kamala to your history and the people that you want to lead. Basad Bissessa's narrative was that TNT nationals stranded abroad are suffering in relation to living accommodations, not being able to vote, and not knowing when they'd be able to return home. But Lahunt notes the terror surrounding slavery, where people of African descent were dehumanized, and he believes there can't be a comparison between the two situations. Slavery is one of the biggest travesties that has happened to civilized people in this world. And to try to equate that in another country, in another place with other people, you would have been lynched because you wouldn't dare equate a to take, which is painful, to the Holocaust. Ridiculous. Lahunt is advising the UNC leader to buy and read a history book and also to show remorse. When you wake up, at least apologize to the people, apologize to people of African descent and people of Indian descent because you also equated to indentorship. Coming up in sport, Kemal Roach reaches 200 wickets, but England take command of third test against the Windies. And government's announcement of planned flights for U.S.-based students comes as welcoming news to sprinter Shaquilla Walcott. Sport is up next. Let's Cook Grenada, a practical culinary guide to local cuisine. Learn new ways to prepare your favorite foods. Or try different menus from various locations across the island. Let's Cook, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on GBN Television, Channel 7 and 11, GBN's Facebook page, and GBN's YouTube channel. If you miss it, catch the repeat Thursdays at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 3.30 p.m. You've spoken. We have heard. Now we're making more time available for your evening primetime shows on K105. From Monday, July 6, your law will air from 6 to 7 p.m. On Tuesdays, Simply Agriculture. And on Wednesdays, join discussions on constitution reform in partnership with Island Media. At 5.55 p.m., we bring you news headlines, a capsule on local, regional, and international events, followed by News at 7 via simulcast with GBN Television. Join Godfrey Augustine for stimulating discussions on Release It from 8 p.m on Wednesdays and Thursdays. GBN's K105.5 and 105.9. We're with you everywhere and anywhere. If you're on the move, catch us online at www.gbn.gd. Hello and welcome to the OECS link. A conversation is a talk. Informal but informed. Hello, Dr. Jules. Hi, how are you? 
between two or more people in which news and ideas are exchanged. A lot of adjustments have to happen at every level. Coming to you from around the Eastern Caribbean, join us every week on this station as we build relationships that uplift our region. And I would encourage persons to go to the OECS Facebook page. Tell us what's happening in your country and your community. Find us on all social media platforms. Email your pictures and videos to media at oecs.int. The OECS link is powered by Republic Bank. Long ago, the strength of Grenadians was in their arms as they worked the lands to get food for the table. Nowadays, most Grenadians' plate is packed with lots of starch and meat, little or no vegetables, plenty fried fruits, and they wash that down with something sweet while sitting in front of screen. Hard work and exercise seem to be out of style, and lifestyle diseases are becoming the fashion of the day and claiming many lives. Let's make a change to live longer. Let us grow and enjoy a variety of natural and safe, fresh vegetables and fruits every day. Use our local fresh seasoning and spices to make our traditional dishes healthier and avoid highly processed foods, snacks and drinks. Drink more water every day to help your body function better. Get moving every day and trade some screen time to share and enjoy healthy family meals. Final test against England in Manchester. The hosts reached 369 all out before restricting the Windies to 137 for six. Stuart Broad struck a half century and took two wickets to leave the Windies trailing by 232 runs. Resuming on 258 for four, England was set back early as Shannon Gabriel removed Ollie Pope by uprooting his stumps with just four runs added. Kimar Roach then got Chris Wokes chopping on for just one, 267 for six. Just Butler stuck around for 67 runs until Gabriel took his wicket. A good low catch from the captain as the Windies looked to be back in the game. Chopper Archer then guided a Roach delivery to Holder again who held on to it. England, 280 for eight. West Roach becoming the ninth bowler to take 200 test wickets for the West Indies. And that but then a Stuart Broad launched a counter-attack. He hammered 62 Broad runs off 45 balls for to propel England from 280 for eight to 356 for nine. He gave his wicket away off the bowling of Ruston Chase. Swept away, there is that man in the yes. deep. Their innings was finally closed off when Holder bit the edge of James Anderson. Cornwall gets in the game as England reach 369 all out. From bat to ball, Broad caused more problems by removing Craig Brassweight for one. John Campbell played some welcoming strokes to try to reassure the windy selectors of his place in the team. Time will tell if he did enough as Jofra Archer woke him up with this short delivery to leave the Windies on 44 for two. Brilliant! It was also time for Shea Hope to say goodbye. Anderson bolted the perfect line to send him on his way for 17. Turns. Shamar Brooks also had one of those deliveries to handle and he too found an edge. West Indies 59 for four. In comes Rustin Chase who gets one coming back from broad. Nine runs he made and that about wraps up the Windies top five batsman with 73 runs on the board chasing 370. Jason Holder has scored a double century before and he would probably have to do so again with only the bowlers to come. Bad light signaled the end of play with Holder on 24 and Shane Dorich on 10. The Windies closing on 137 for six. Still trailing by 232 runs. Sergio Dufour, TV6 Sport. Terrific shot from Jermaine Blackwood. Meantime, it's good news for student athlete Shaquilla Walcott. The sprinter from Claxton Bay is trying to return to the United States to complete her scholarship in Texas and was searching for a means to do so before August 10th. Today, the government announced that they are organizing a flight for students to return to the U.S. Walcott is therefore waiting on the date for flight arrangements. Minister of National Security Stuart Young made this statement in the Ministry of Health's media briefing this morning.
Caribbean Airlines is working very closely with the Ministry of National Security for us to get a flight, possibly a couple of flights, up to the United States to take our students or Trinidad and Tobago students who need to go back to school. We'll be flying to Miami, and then students can make their way from the hub of Miami to their various schools wherever they may be around the world. Your weather report is up next, so stay with us. This is the voice of the PNM. Let's cook Grenada, a practical culinary guide to local cuisine. Learn new ways to prepare your favorite foods. Or try different menus from various locations across the island. Let's cook. Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on GBN Television, Channel 7 and 11, GBN's Facebook page, and GBN's YouTube channel. If you miss it, catch the repeat Thursdays at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 3.30 p.m. You've spoken. We have heard. Now we're making more time available for your evening primetime shows on K105. From Monday, July 6th, your law will air from 6 to 7 p.m. On Tuesdays, Simply Agriculture. And on Wednesdays, join discussions on constitution reform in partnership with Island Media. At 5.55 p.m., we bring you news headlines, a capsule on local, regional, and international events, followed by News at 7 via Simulcast with GBN Television. Join Godfrey Augustine for stimulating discussions on Release It from 8 p.m on Wednesdays and Thursdays. GBN's K105.5 and 105.9. We're with you everywhere and anywhere. If you're on the move, catch us online at www.gbn.gd. Hello and welcome to the OECS Link. A conversation. You light to moderate showers and a medium chance of heavy showers and thunderstorms during the morning into early afternoon, mainly over Trinidad. Gusty winds and street flash flooding may accompany heavy showers and thunderstorms. The Met Office has discontinued the tropical storm warning for Tobago and adverse weather alert for Trinidad. The forecast temperature for tomorrow is 28 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 29 degrees in Tobago. For marine interest, these are rough with waves up to 2 5 meters in open waters and near calm in sheltered areas. And that brings us to the end of tonight's newscast. I'm Michelle Anna Y. On behalf of all of us here at Team 6, have a good night. Powered by Republic Bank. Long ago, the strength of Grenadians was in their arms as they worked the lands to get food for the table. Nowadays, most Grenadians' plate is packed with lots of starch and meat, little or no vegetables, plenty fried fruits, and they wash